In this video, we're going to look at how the MOSFET differential pair circuit responds to common mode input. So we have our MOSFET differential pair circuit here on the left. You can see it consists of two transistors, Q1 and Q2, a current source, and we've represented our common mode input as a single voltage, VCM, connected to the gate terminals of both transistors. That is VG1 and VG2. So straight away we can say that our input VG1 is equal to VG2 which equals VCM. What we're interested in here is finding out how the circuit responds to that common mode input. So what is the output? And in this case, we will derive a differential output. That is the difference between the two output terminals VD1 and VD2. So V out equal to VD1 minus VD2. So to analyze this circuit is actually quite simple. The first thing to do is to recognize the symmetry of the circuit and to acknowledge that as long as our transistors are identical, Q1 is equal to Q2, then we have perfect symmetry and our total current I will be split evenly between both sides of the circuit. So therefore, it will be split evenly between ID1 and ID2. So we can say that ID1 is equal to ID2, which is equal to I divided by 2. It's therefore quite straightforward to calculate an equation for VD, where we can say that VD1 is simply supply voltage VDD minus the drop across the resistor RD. And again for the symmetry of the circuit we can see that that is also true for VD2. So therefore VD1 is equal to VD2 which gives us our answer for our differential output, V out. If VD1 equals VD2, then V out must equal zero. And that's exactly what we'd expect from our differential amplifier, because the purpose here is to reject those common mode signals and only amplify the differences between the inputs. So we've shown that our MOSFET differential pair does not respond to common mode inputs, but this relies on certain conditions which will limit the range over which that is true. So our common mode voltage VCM has upper and lower limits, which we will derive in this part of the video. So this is known as the input common mode range. We'll start by looking at the VCM max, so the maximum common mode voltage that we can apply to the MOSFET differential pair and still have the condition where it will be adequately rejected. So this maximum voltage is limited by the fact that the, amp the transistors need to remain in the saturation region. So we know from our previous work with MOSFETs that the condition for saturation is that VDS be more than or equal to VGS minus VT. And so it's clear from this that if we increase our common mode input voltage, that will increase VGS and could drive our amplifiers out of saturation. So in this case, we can rewrite this equation by splitting up the terms. So we have Vd minus Vs 
more than or equal to Vg minus Vs minus our threshold voltage Vt. So we can see straight away here that we can make a quick simplification as the Vs's will cancel out. So that leaves us with just Vd is more than or equal to Vg minus Vt. Now as we showed in the previous slide, we know that the equation for Vd is equal to Vd d minus the drop across the resistor Rd. And we also know that Vg is equal to Vcm, as this is directly connected to the gate. So that means we can now write our expression in terms of VDD, RD, and VCM. And once we have this expression, we can just do some simple rearrangement to get that in terms of VCM. So here we now can see that VCM must be less than or equal to our threshold voltage VT plus VDD minus the drop across that resistor. So it's clear to see that if our common mode voltage must be less than or equal to that, then of course the maximum will be in the case when it is equal to Vt plus Vdd minus I over 2 Rd. So we found the maximum limit of our common mode range. Okay, so now we're going to look at what limits the lower side of our input common mode range, our Vcm min. So Vcm min is limited by the fact that we need to maintain a certain voltage across our current source I in order for it to operate correctly. So we will call that voltage VCS. So this will depend on the details of the circuit, but we can tell straight away that our VCM min will in some way depend on VCS. So let's come up with an expression for VCS within our MOSFET differential pair here. We know that on the top end here, we have our source voltage, and at the bottom, we have our negative supply. So we can say straight away that Vcs is going to equal Vs minus that negative supply, so equal to Vs plus Vss. And we also know from quick analysis of our circuit here that Vs is equal to our common mode voltage Vcm minus Vgs. That's the difference in voltage between the gate and the source here. So by equating these two expressions for Vs, which we now have, so we can rearrange the top expression there, and we can now equate the two expressions We can simply rearrange this last expression in terms of VCM.
and you can see that we now have an expression for VCM in terms of VCS and some of our other circuit parameters and as our VCS here is defined as the minimum voltage needed to cross that current source this is this also equates to VCM min and of course we can also express that in terms of the threshold voltage and overdrive voltage.